two apple, take one, apple baker mark. NASCAR was born in the dirt. You know what? Sorry, you guys. Can we? I'm not feeling this. How about? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Let's go from the top, everybody. NASCAR was born in the dirt. Bristol was born in these hills and hollers of Thunder Valley. Outlaws and moonshine runners would navigate the back roads and dirt tracks right around here. They didn't need any fancy gear. Heck, they didn't even need a real road. All they needed was a car loaded with horsepower and a right foot made of lead. Tonight, past meets present at the world's fastest and dirtiest half mile. It's Bristol, and it's going to get a little dirty right here on Fox. I honestly, I have an opinion, okay. but I feel like as a car owner, I'm better off. Uh, have, I have the right to remain silent, and I think I'm better off exercising You're my right. You're let get off that easy. I'll tell you, I'll time. take it from here, Tony. I'll get you off the hook. Well, let me ask you, Clint. We literally need Judge Judy. I'm right. telling you, three weeks in a row of penalties, uh, appeals, more appeals. I am so tired of hearing about these penalties and all this stuff. It's time to go racing. We got it. We need Judge Judy to clean this all up. Right. She's a no bull kind of deal. I don't like the penalties. I don't like the appeals process. Obviously, wow. somebody's mad. NASCAR's mad about all of this. After it's all said and done, we win the appeal, and then the next week we get a 75-point fine and put us right back in the hole that we've been in if you're in Nick Motorsports. It does not look good for NASCAR. It doesn't look good for our sport. The good news is that racetrack looks pretty good, and I'm tired of talking about that, and I want to talk about the dirt. You know what we also have to talk is we have to talk birthdays because as we check in with our reporters, our girl Jamie Little is celebrating a big birthday today. Happy birthday, Jamie. What do you have for us, girl? Thank you so much, Shannon. Yes, what a day. Happy Easter to all of you and your families, everybody watching at home. It's been a wonderful day. Sun is shining. We're excited. But right now I'm in the pit box because tonight, non-competitive stops. Look at this. This is the pit box. All those fancy boxes, they're back in Charlotte. Those fancy pickers, they're back in Charlotte. The mechanics are going over the wall. They will service the cars tonight. Six minutes. You can only come in during stage breaks and change your tires and add your fuel and make your adjustments. You can make more more adjustments tonight because you will have those six minutes. But those fancy pick guns, nope. This is all you get right here. Nothing big. What you see in your garage at home. They've got the outerwear here. They've learned over time these things take a beating. They keep that dirt and mud out of the front of the car. They'll take it off, slap it back on. So looks a little bit different tonight. Everything looks different. It's Bristol dirt, baby. Seeing these guys fix and go to battle. What kind of driver were you? You're an aggressive driver? I would be terrible. I get motion sick. I've got I, one so time I rode. For a ride. No, no, no. Oh, okay, not, okay. One time I've done it and I rode with Mario Andretti and I was like, oh my goodness, I'm about to throw up in front of everybody because I was so. I wish you would have. That would have been great. <laughs> That's best TV no, ever. That's no, best not TV. Not for me, it would have yeah. been. Well, and the whole day, the rest of the day, I was so sick. So, you, no, no, no. Oh, but you were a versatile player. I'm sure you'd be a versatile driver. Thanks for coming by. Happy Easter. Of course, best of great it's to see you guys. Nice having you nice here. Here, man. Nice to see you. Everybody knows we're celebrating our 75th anniversary, and and you can't do that without celebrating the 75 greatest drivers. And in 1998, we picked 50, and there's a group of folks inside the industry that picked 25 to add to that list, and we're going to start celebrating them for the next five weeks leading into Darlington, and we'll have all 25 notified and have a big shindig in Darlington around the 75 greatest drivers of NASCAR. But wow. it's an honor tonight, Tony, to let you in on the fact that you're one of our 25 <laughs> and now one of All our right. 75 greatest drivers, awesome. which is no surprise to anybody. And we didn't have a helmet throwing category. You would have got that too. So. I would have led that one for sure. You would have led that one. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Appreciate well, how that. How about a few words of being, I mean, we, we know Hall of Fame, all the other things that you've done and still being very active, Tony. This is a night, I mean, you talk about the 75 greatest in any sport. I mean, that, that runs deep for a guy. I know this sport means a lot to you. It's a huge honor. I mean, you think of all the drivers in 75 years that have competed in the NASCAR Cup Series. It's a, a truly an honor just to be a part of that category and that group of people. There's a lot of drivers in there that I've looked up to for a long time and still look up to. Yeah, Clint still looks up to you, as a matter yeah. of fact. <laughs>
<laughs> you have to. That's a that's a cool thing for oh, all the years you've been Oh, unbelievable! But I mean, it's so deserving. You know, I've always said this. I wouldn't have had my start in NASCAR without a guy like Tony going up all around the country, running dirt tracks like my home track, putting those grassroots level racing on the map. Right? Those NASCAR tracks, the weekly racing series all around the country. Tony would dip in, much like you see the stars of today, Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell. These guys going to those racetracks and highlighting those local drivers. That was a big part of me having my opportunity and that's the reason why you're one of the best and they'll they'll reveal names throughout the week some on race hub some will be released through social it's, media it'll they, be five names each week through the next five weeks till we get to darlington so, so there'll be four others get notified this week you're the first one four drivers doing the double dip this weekend hoping what they got out there on the track last night in the truck races experience they can use out here tonight well joey logano and chase briscoe and william byron all finished in the top 10 with joey logano getting the win last night jonathan davenport the dirt specialist came in 14th now in the past two years 12 drivers have done the double dip and two of them just two have finished in the top 10 in both and no one has swept the weekend but joey logano has the chance to be the first there's been a lot of talk this weekend about track conditions there has been a ton of rain in the Bristol area, but as of yesterday, this racetrack has been in phenomenal shape. You'll see behind me right now, we've got the Packer cars going around the racetrack. They're getting the final little bit of work done on this track. It's been tilled up. The moisture's in it. The big question for the teams is how much moisture is going to stay in the track as the race goes on. When will it blow off and turn to what they call a dry slick, which will change the handling conditions drastically? That's what everybody's going to be guessing. The dirt guys obviously with that advantage. I've also been told that I can use a screwdriver to see how firm this track is and you'll see that's not going in there and we're not even hell we're not even on the racetrack the heck with the screwdriver josh sims i've lost control of it over here a little bit and that's to spin the rear tires to get turn the two the car to rotate. around goes bubba wallace after contact and one car is up and into the wall and joey logano who won this race Four two tires. years ago is into the water barrels that protect the head end of pit road Four cars under a blanket, and there was plenty of contact there. Bubba Wallace starts to go around, collecting Logano, Byron, and Gilliland. Face truck is in, and here we go on the dirt of Bristol. way up out of the groove William Byron having trouble got up too high track looks like it's got quite a bit of moisture in it so far Tony yeah and I don't think they have to be that high yet I think some of these guys look at that and think that cushion is already there that's dirt that they tilled up overnight and they've been watering that all day the problem is they, they haven't laid it down and that's for a reason that's on it's intentional to make that hopefully build into a cushion as the race goes on drivers start your engines! My pits are closed with two laps to go in stage one. No red winches are going to be extremely busy at this stage break. I'm too tight. I'm too loose. We're going to be all over the place. Oh, contact. Turn four. Big wreck. And Denny Hamlin got the worst of it, along with Josh Berry. So this will end the stage. I don't think any of them got too much damage there, Tony. Man, when I looked up. I heard you say that. Looked up. There was cars all over the place. Everybody did a great job of avoiding massive contact. A little bit of damage on the front of 11. Denny Hamlin quite a bit there on the right side. Kyle Larson gets his second stage win of the season and his second on Bristol dirt as this pileup happens in turn four. Sharon Speedway. In Ohio. But Austin Dillon leaning on Larson, trying to move him up the racetrack. And here is the choose. 
It's a choose drone. You're looking at the camera mounted on the drone. Uh, you can't put a choose cone out there. Somebody would have to go and get it. So high-tech solution uh, to the situation. You must clearly choose your lane inside or outside before you reach the choose drone. Michael McDowell and keeps going. That was impressive. 360, Michael McDowell. Man, the old flag man hurts you there. Yep, caution waved. Keep your foot in it. Just dance it all around. Quick caution. Watch this. Watch the 34 right side of your screen in yellow. Just gets it sheared down a little bit too much, but stays in the gas right there 360 i told you this guy was wheeling it tonight and look at everybody scrambling to get out from underneath of him and miss him fantastic job by all that was awesome michael mcdowell whoa, whoa, whoa. that is a missed opportunity and a great job by ty gibbs nine times out of ten that's in your lap and day over for gibbs that was the monster energy cam for ty gibbs speaking of nine that's where he has finished now, three races in a row. On this five and 41 situation, Larson and Priest. Larson just comes off the corner and he's probably here and late in his ear that the 41's got to run on the outside and just that contact on the left front. So during caution, Ryan uh, came up to have a word. First on the inside, uh, then goes, uh, he goes to the outside and Makes a, makes a gesture toward Kyle Larson. Uh, Tony, maybe you can interpret for us. Oh, yeah. that's He's telling him how much he likes his new haircut, and uh, he's really appreciative that his mom brought over cookies yesterday. <laughs> that's what you got out of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's what was said on the 41 radio. Yeah, I'd make sure you return the favor because he, he shouldn't make mistakes like that, so I doubt it was. It was not a mistake. Yeah, and his father just told me he was telling him. Here's the uh, Larson Priest dust up on the front straightaway. He hit pretty hard there, Tony. That right front ain't even the right rear with a totally turn four. Davenport goes around after break. contact. And that will be a caution flag. Not yet. Now, caution. Lap 81. Yeah, he rolled down the racetrack, almost caught Brad Keselowski. Jonathan Davenport in the 13. Nope, he's around all by himself and avoids contact. He was running 24th. Tires look a lot different for the dirt race. These just came off of Austin Dillon's car, 75 laps. They look brand new. Clint, Tony, I know you guys always like to see what they look like when they come off, but man, they look like they could put them right back on if needed later. Boy, they sure do, Jamie. I think you're spot on. They maybe still look like they've just cleaned them up and roll again, huh? Yeah, and that's the thing about this dirt on this racetrack. It's it's very very pure clay, and it's doesn't it's not very abrasive at all, so it doesn't tear the tires up very much. Regan. Yeah, Mike, a little question here for Tony and Clint. Guys, I'm not a dirt racing guy, so I don't know a lot about what's going on with these tires, but this is the right rear off of Kyle Larson's car. Take a look at the edge of the right rear right here, starting to chunk away just a little bit. Is that something they need to be concerned about or not? It's really not. I mean, some of that is because I'm sure Larson was a little freer than he wanted to be or loose uh, at the start of the race than what he anticipated, but that's just where you're sliding the car laterally to the, to the, to the right. So... Uh, as, as the track slows down and slicks off a little more, he'll run that car straighter, and it, that should clean up. Spin to win. The second time he spun out, I don't know what to think. Priest There's one in the back straightaway, and it's Ryan Priest. Oh, yeah. And that will be a caution. Caution's out. Get rolling here. Get rolling. I think Larry's exactly right on his call. These guys are definitely, they saw what Reddick and these boys have stayed out in the stage. There's going to be some more doing it in the second stage. Ryan Priest, running eighth, goes for a twirl on the back straightaway. 
Michael McDowell. Here's the first one up off the corner. Spinning around, grabbing a gear. Look, look at those tires spinning. He's rolling. Quick on the caution light. You show me one. But me lesson learned, okay? That. He's going to spin it again. We're going to stay green and see if he can do it again. And, yes, he did. That's your pod's big move of the race. You show me once, I'm going to say maybe luck had something to do with it. You do it twice, I'm impressed. That was cool. Oh! Teammates got into one another just like Larson and Priest. Dylan is very aggressive behind the wheel tonight. Definitely a different Austin Dillon that I've seen in weeks past. Well, you he see this in him when he gets some confidence. When he has a car that feels good to him, that's when you see this style of driving in Austin come out where he can get up on the wheel and do his job. Some sad news to pass along in the dirt track and sprint car world. Last night at Lawrenceburg, Indiana Speedway, the defending track champion, Justin Owen, was qualifying his USAC sprint car, which bicycled down the back straightaway, got into the wall, and then into a series of violent flips that he could not survive. The rest of the program was canceled, and our condolences to the friends, family, and team of Justin Owen, who was 27. Racers with the oh Larson around. Wow. Mark it down. Caution. Boy, you know where that it's clear. takes. Wrap around here. My thinking on this, exactly what we were talking about. That was all by himself. Guys, he's in a box. He he can't change the tires. He's he's locked into what he's got. Remember, you can only change the tires at the end of the stage break. Well, it's too late now anyway. It doesn't matter. Damage is done. The You're only, not going to come from dead last and win this race. The only way he'd get to change one now if it was flat down to the rim, and then you could only change the flat tire. Kyle Larson goes around. Tenth caution flag of the night. And joining us at Martinsville will be 2000 Series Cup champion Bobby Labonte. And Tony Stewart will be, be back in the booth for Talladega. It's going to be fun having Bobby in the booth. Looking forward to that. Champion driver, always fun to hear his vantage point. It's going to be a fun one. Martinsville's fun. Favorite racetrack, right up the road from the house. And the dirt racers with the oh Larson around. Wow. Mark it down. Caution. Boy, you know where that it's clear. takes. Wrap around here. My thinking on this, exactly what we were talking about. That was all by himself. Guys, he's in a box. He, he can't change the tires. He's, he's locked into what he's got. Remember, you can only change the tires at the end of the stage break. Well, it's too late now anyway. It doesn't matter. Damage is done. The You're only, not going to come from dead last and win this race. The only way he'd get to change one now if it was flat down to the rim, and then you could only change the flat tire. Kyle Larson goes around. Tenth caution flag of the night. Denny. And around goes Denny. 360. Keep going. Hold your line get it rolling. Still Hold your green. Line get it rolling. Still. That was close. And we stay green. Four times down the straightaway. Larson and Priest. And it's Larson in the wall. Interesting. Maybe a payback. I hope not. That'll be caution number 11 here at lap 176. And that started, Tony, back in the middle of three and four and ended up in turn one. The 11th caution of the night, the five and the 41. Here's a look at it. Larson on the outside here. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you heard him say he was frustrated with the earlier contact and it's time to do something about it. And it looks to me like he here's what happened. Uh, yeah, this is earlier from the contact between Larson and Priest. All right, here's uh, the 41's radio. Yeah, 
It's back there in traffic. Yeah, I tried to make time up top and it didn't work. But yeah, you keep digging, guys. Wow. You're all the way down into the dirt trying to spin you. I would say that's the purpose. They're trying to spin you, would you? Absolutely. I mean, when it happened the other way around, we didn't do that. I mean, Denny Allen got a penalty for wrecking somebody on purpose, so no, he thinks he's better than everybody else. He that everybody else should just pull over for him, evidently. Yeah, I mean, it's eye for an eye, you know? Well, that's the crew chief and the spotter. That's all conjecture. There's two fellas know what happened. There's one of them. The other's driving the 41. And and as slick as the straightaways have got, I'm not sure I 100% agree with that. If you if Kyle spun the tires and it got out a little bit, it would drive him to the inside. Well, Mike Kyle Larson checked and released from the infield care center. Kyle, we saw contact earlier in the race between you and Ryan Priest. Then we saw it again off of turn two, continued down the straightaway. What caused it to continue down the straightaway? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm guessing he was paying me back for whatever I did earlier and ran me straight in the fence and uh, my car was broke and, and it crashed. So, yeah, uh, it sucks, but I should just be mad at myself for spinning out earlier and put myself back there. So it just sucks. Let's uh, watch the Cheddar's on board and see what happened here to Kyle Busch. Yeah, that one was no different than any of the other ones we've seen. Just kind of a spin, spun right down on to pit road. 29 cars still on the lead lap. It'll be eight laps to the finish. Then he got a huge shot in the back for Grisco, but it's actually exactly what the doctor ordered. Well, it was. Oh, no. Around goes Blaney. Then he got wrecked. Still rolling, uh, still green. And Blaney goes from the front row to the back as Bell scoots away from Tyler Reddick. For fifth place. Reddick had a good corner in one and two there. Listen, Christopher's not leaving that top right now. He, There's no use for him to look in the mirror. The best thing he can do is focus straight ahead. White flag, White flag credit one bank, crash on the back stretch. One car stopped against the inside wall. We're still going, still green. And he's rolling. We're still green. Oh, he's in the fence. Try to stay on the outside. Caution's out. Caution's out. Caution's out. Stay low. Stay low. Christopher Bell. Race is over. Comes to the flag. And checkers wave over the Joe Gibbs number 20. You won. Hell Bell, yeah, buddy. Good DeWalt, and Joe Gibbs Racing and Toyota are going to victory lane. Finally, a dirt track driver wins the dirt race. I knew it's got to be a matter of time for Christopher Bell found victory lane. He's been very solid. The Gibbs bunch been kind of quiet, but over the last year, even two years, he's been the one that's slowly rising to the top of the Gibbs camp. I remember when Kyle Larson started in the Cup Series and I was sitting in the motor home. We were both watching a Western States midget race and he goes, this kid is better than me. I said, who is it? He goes, Christopher Bell. See what he's doing? Polish victory lap. Yep. Pretty cool. Something Alan Kowicki did for his first win and did when he won the Cup Championship. Because he said, I wanted to do something people would remember long after I'm gone. They do, and drivers do. Left side window to the fans, saluting them on the way to victory class yes it is and that's a great way to honor alan i mean it's like you said it's not just today because of the 30th year that's what drivers have been doing ever since then christopher bell led 100 of the 250 laps tonight including the last one all right let's join regan smith well, Christopher Bell had to drive 100 perfect laps at the end of that race. You had restarts. You had challenges from Chase Briscoe, from Tyler Reddick. You held them all off. How does this one feel on Easter? Man, let me tell you, those are some of the longest laps of my entire life. You know, this place is so much fun, whether it's dirt or concrete. And whenever the cushion got up there on the top, it was very, it was very tough because you couldn't drive it super hard. Otherwise, you get sucked in and 
you got your right front into it, you push a little bit. If you got your right rear into it, you'd slide. So uh, it was a lot of fun. But man, I'm just so grateful to be here uh, driving this number 20 for DeWalt, Joe Gibbs Racing. And uh, that was a lot of fun. You talk about the cushion going to the top. We saw you hitting the right rear a number of times. Was there any moment there where you thought, uh oh, this is going to be the one that gets me into it? Yeah, so three and four, that was the scary corner for me because you could, if you got into it too far, you lost all your momentum. And one and two, I think I kept hitting the wall a couple of times, but uh, it seemed like there was a little bit more moisture up there and it would hold me better. So I'm like, okay, I can really attack one and two, but three and four is the end. I got to be careful. And uh, man, I just can't get over how long those laps feel. You know, it's a, a 20 second lap and you're moving the wheel 18 times a corner. So uh, it feels like it get, takes a long time to get around there. Christopher Bell, your winner on Easter Sunday in Bristol. It was compelling to watch those closing laps, but what was that battle like with Christopher Bell? Uh, it, was, uh, it was a lot of fun, honestly. Really intense. Um, yeah, towards the end there, definitely feel like I, I found a little bit more. I thought I had at the edge, but I wasn't quite uh, there in the last couple laps. Definitely found it. Um, just, just hate it for everybody on the Sirius XM, Toyota Camry, TRD. Um, just, just needed to be a little bit closer uh, than I was. I think with two to go, it would have been really bold to try and make that move work. Um, obviously, on the white flag coming into three and four, I was going to see. But, uh, yeah, we'll never know if it worked. But uh, still a good rebound for us. We definitely thought the track was going to take a different direction than it did as the race unfolded. So, uh, you know, just as it turned out, our strategy wasn't the best. But, uh, well, that was on me. And his son, Bo, comes up. To